Welcome CERT members and neighbors to the monthly CERT video version of the CERT general meeting uh, for March of 2022, if I got that right. Uh, tonight we'll have uh, an update on the uh, FLSS uh, position, which Chris will spell out for us. And we're gonna have a special visit by uh, former Ashland Fire Chief J John Carnes, who's now at the airport and does things there. And we'll uh, look at some videos and talk about and do a little skill reviews with some cool videos that Steve Wire found. So without further ado, Chris, play, take it away, please. Good evening. So happy to be here again. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, I do finally have solid good news about uh, the position, um, as I have uh, explained in the past, but I will explain again for those who did not hear previously. The CERT halftime position was combined with our weed abatement position, um, who that's the person who patrols around for uh, dead grass and people not, not cutting back their um, flammable yards and whatnot. Um, and then uh, that forms a nearly 1.0 full-time equivalent position so instead of having uh, two part-time people, it's better to have one full-time employee. Um, and that person will also um, fill in a little bit of uh, extra time with some fire inspections uh, around the community. So that uh, specialist, I know it's kind of a fire service thing, but the fire and life safety specialist um, is a, uh, a pretty common position in a lot of fire departments. Uh, so the FLSS was written, uh, job description was written, that went out a while ago. It got kind of held up in um, the budget finance office while um, we were switching employees down there as well as getting a new city manager. And the everybody is very uh, vigilant about adding um, new employees or new jobs these days with budget concerns. So it needed a little extra scrutiny um, by the new city manager. But all of that is now in the past. The position is being posted. Um, one of the caveats of it is it needs to, the person applying needs to be a firefighter and or needs to be a firefighter and be able to get their EMT certification within six months of being in the position. So most firefighter folks out there are already EMTs. So those usually come together. So uh, I think that won't uh, dissuade too many people. Um, so that person can also jump in and help during firefighting or other um, larger scale uh, emergencies where we need extra people on the front line. So that's exciting that it is out there. We, the way it is listed, because the city has no human resources department right now, we actually aren't able to post it on the city's website. Um, everybody has quit, so um, there you go. Um, so it's being posted via a third party um, uh, website that hosts fire service jobs. Um, and so uh, we're working on getting a better link from them. And it's also possibly gonna be posted through Rogue Valley Council of Governments, which will provide us a better uh, one stop, one click link to get to the job. Um, but it's being uh, sent out to the Western Fire Chiefs email list to the Rogue Valley Fire Chiefs Association. Um, yeah, where else do we have it going? I know there's a couple other places, but um, it'll be open for a few weeks and it'll likely take a couple months before we actually see somebody um, between the hiring process and um, then background checks can take a little while um, because they will be a sworn firefighter. The background is a little bit longer than for a civilian employee. So it's happening. That's the good news. Um, and so we will, um, there will be a spot, um, two spots uh, during the interview process for, for CERT folks to be involved in the selection. And so I'll be um, reaching out and we'll figure that out um, probably in the beginning of April to mid-April would be interviews. Okay, glad I could finally deliver that good news. It's 
been uh, too long in coming. So thank you for your patience. And I, uh, I apologize for uh, the length of time it took to get that done, but it's out there. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for the update. And uh, we'll look forward to reading that. Uh, well, we actually kind of know what the job posting looks like because we've all got it on before, but uh, we'll be interested to see how that process goes and uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch with you on that for sure. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, we're going to be ready in a moment for part two of our evening uh, with um, John. Are you, are you ready there? Give you a second to get. Uh, I think so. Uh, if the computer continues to cooperate. That's good. Well, you sound great. So uh, that's the main thing we can hear you. Um, okay, everybody. Uh, let me give you a quick introduction. Um, Chief John Carnes uh, was uh, Deputy Fire Chief of uh, the City of Beverly Hills from 1984 to 2009. Uh, correct me if it, when I make an error, which probably will. And then became Fire Chief of Ashland Fire and Rescue from 2009 to 2016. Uh, and then made the amazing leap to take over as interim Ashland City Administrator from 2016 to 2018, thereby keeping our city running, among other things and since then has become the fire chief of Rogue Valley International Airport, right up the road, uh, where uh, he has a very interesting uh, event planned. So uh, Chief, let us know about that and anything else you'd like to say. Well, thanks, Paul, for having me at the meeting and for the invite. And um, I'm sure there's some familiar faces out there. It's been a while, but uh, um, it's good to, Good to be back here. Yeah, you know, what the event that Paul's referring to is what we're calling the airport's triennial event. And as the name applies, every three years, we put on a full functional exercise that is required by the FAA. And this exercise is designed to practice the airport's emergency plan. And that's much like Ashland's uh, EOP, Emergency Operations Plan that really exists in most all cities and counties in the state. This one is really geared towards an aviation incident. And uh, what it is, is we'll simulate a, a, uh, an event with a uh, commercial regional airliner. And that event will end up uh, culminating in uh, uh, MCI or mass casualty event. So by that, we end up uh, bringing in all of our stakeholders and mutual aid partners. So uh, in this event that's coming up May 18th, we actually are having uh, most of the fire departments getting involved, uh, certainly Mercy Flights, uh, all of the airport operations, um, their enforcement and their administration, uh, all the ambulance providers, the law enforcement, we've got FBI, the sheriffs, the OSP and Medford PD participating. And what it does at the end of it, we look at it and go, where can we improve? What went well? What needs to be shored up a little bit? And those items are, are taking into actionable tasks that hopefully we can implement and improve the process uh, as we go forward. It actually ends up being a fair amount of fun. Uh, this year, we're actually bringing in a, a prop from the Bay Area that simulates a small regional jet and it's got some propane fires. So this will be the first time that we actually practice with our mutual aid partners, the other fire departments in actual fire suppression. We've always just real simulated it before. And we'll have around 50 patients that we uh, moulage up and then uh, some get transported to the emergency departments. And those are also simulated. And that will be in the bays of Mercy Flights hangars. Uh, I expand this a little bit just because it's such a great opportunity. We activate what we call the Friends and Family Assistance Center, which is what most people would think of as a reunification center. So that's the responsibility of the air carriers. And that's designed for them to be in a position to 
deliver support and information to the friends and families of the passengers uh, that were on this airline. So that will be May 18th and we're hopefully with the uh, cooperation of weather and COVID and that, that we end up having a very successful event. We put a lot of effort into this. So I talked to Paul and see if uh, Ashland Cert uh, would be interested in participating in that. And there's a couple of roles that I could see the members participating in. One obviously would be if you wanted to be a victim and go out into the tarmac there and then uh, we would have the uh, fire and EMS folks respond and triage you, simulate treatment and actually transport you to the hospitals. And along with that, it's tracking the patients. One of the, I would say the deficiencies that we discovered last time was we did not do a good job of tracking the patients. So when those family and friends and others were asking the status of the passenger of the plane, we often weren't able to give good information. So we've implemented a few changes and hopefully uh, there'll be an improvement there. The other would be uh, actors in the friends and family center, which you would come in and simulate being, uh, again, friends or family of uh, some of the passengers and be in a position to influence the air carriers to give you information. So it's very interesting how that works that uh, the air carriers quite often don't have that many people on duty at any given time, maybe 10 or so. So when they're um, it's, it's challenging for them. And that's one reason we provide the support we're also having the Red Cross and the chaplains group come in to, to help with that. Um, the other could be just providing that support in the Friends and Family Center that uh, you come in. We'll probably have about 20 or so actors there. Um, so that's what I see as uh, some of the opportunities here. Uh, it's, it's a little challenging in that we're taking an event that in reality would probably go over at least one full operational period, which would be, oh gosh, I'm thinking 10, 12 hours and we compress it into what is basically two or two and a half hours. So we do have to simulate a lot of things and, and um, quicken the pace, if you will, but it's gonna be held on uh, May 18th. Uh, it does start fairly early in the morning and would end about one o'clock. Oh, one other role is if any of you are, uh, maybe a little artistic and are willing to help out in our moulage center. That was one of the uh, uh, blocks, I would say, of getting it uh, uh, done uh, in a timely manner. Last time was we didn't have enough moulage artists. We have the supplies, but we need some people that um, can apply some of those uh, devices and do a little bit of makeup work. So if there's any questions, I would certainly be Willing to answer. Uh, Ariane, you have your hand up, I think. Yes, I, I had a question. For those of us who can't attend this event, will it be filmed so we can learn from it? For, we could see what went on and learn from it? Yeah, hopefully we're going to have two different ways to film it. Um, we're going to invite a uh, news reporter to actually be embedded and also have a, a camera person with them. So they'll be able to um, uh, photograph their experience. We did that last time, it worked quite well. Uh, the other is, is again, just having some of our um, airport employees film it and hopefully be able to take that forward and do the lessons learned uh, meeting. So um, yeah. that may take a little longer to put together. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Other questions? Um, I'll ask one. I think uh, so. The in the um, family and friends and family assistance center, uh, if a cert member was like in support of that, any idea of like what that would entail? Would just like show up and be ready to talk to people? 
Yeah, um, if you're going in to support people, there'll be several rooms involved and it would really depend on what the status is of their loved one. Um, obviously, you know, if, if there, there will be some fatalities, we have patients in all categories, just so we're, we're testing the system completely. But, um, you know, that's the area where the chaplains would probably concentrate. The other would be just um, providing support, maybe helping be a liaison between that individual and uh, information. The information will come from a number of sources typically. And I would say that's the one area, if you look historically at uh, airline crashes or events, um, where the organization struggled is to get good, accurate information. Um, this is, these are events where social media is not your friend. And typically the information gets out in social media that's not always accurate. And so it's being that person that gives support to that individual and helps them pursue accurate information of their loved one. In reality, we would also be facilitating uh, with the Red Cross to get them lodging and, and food and, and other support as well. Okay. Uh, Steve. Now, I might mention I, I participated, um, I guess that was, well, it would have been two and a half years ago in the one right. before. Right. Um, and I was a, a distraught family member that was in the room. And so I got to, uh, it's really good if you ever want to like improve your acting skills because, <laughs> um, you know, you try to like badger the airline people and, you know, try to get information out of them that they're not supposed to give you. And, you know, I mean, you don't want to be obnoxious too much, but, um, but yeah, it's kind of fun, you know, kind of a fun role. We got to the chaplains, got to talk to the chaplains and make, pretend that I was all distraught and they had therapy dogs there and everything. So, so you know, kind of an interesting experience. Of interest, one of the challenges the air carriers run into in these events is um, they have all, all seven airlines that serve the airport have corporate policies not to give the manifest out right away. As you can imagine, they don't want that information in the wrong hands. But this year, I'm going to challenge the law enforcement agencies that are attending, particularly the FBI, because they do carry some weight, uh, to influence those organizations to provide that uh, as early as possible. Because you can imagine knowing who was on the plane and who made it and who didn't is important, certainly valuable. All right. Great. Uh, Dana, please. Yes, if we are interested in participating, who do we contact? Um, you could contact me direct. I could give you my uh, email uh, right now, if that would help. Sure. Um, just uh, J Carnes, so initial J and then K-A-R-N-S. And that's at Protect Fire. And a lot of people spell that wrong. It's P-R-O-T-E-C, no K or H, P-R-O-T-E-C-F-I-R-E dot -E com. And uh, I could contact you and find out what you're interested in and um, put you in one of these roles. Uh, those are really the three areas that we need um, some help in. And uh, if you plan on being a victim, we'll go over that. Uh, you are quite likely with the moulage effort to, to get some clothes stained and ruined. So we need you to bring in your uh, gardening clothes or something. Um, but that's quite interesting to see the process when you have a large number of folks that need to be triaged out and you have a minimum number of uh, uh, responders. We're going to um, uh, tier them in as we normally would, you know, we call a first alarm and a second alarm and a third alarm. So they don't typically all show up at once, but uh, it's, uh, I'm seeing getting really good cooperation between the fire folks and Mercy Flights this year. Very good. Well, that sounds super interesting. Uh, Crystal, go ahead. So I have a question. Um, one of the things that CERT has trained in is communications. Right. And I know in an emergency, that is oftentimes very confusing. Is there a place for CERT to uh, use our radios and communications in an event like this? Or do you think that 
is not advisable. Um, you're right on target that uh, communication is the Achilles heel of most emergency events. I've always said the next emergency call I go on where the communication is perfect will be the first. It seems like there's always some snafus. This event, I would say, is one that probably we wouldn't use outside communications too much. Unlike, you know, those of you that remember some of the seminars used to put in Ashland for seismic events, I think those are areas that absolutely CERT would just you'd be almost invaluable as far as going in canvassing neighborhoods and, and communicating that back, um, wildland fires and, and other maybe more long-term events, but this is so locate, so uh, 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 confined as far as time and location. I don't see too much as far as uh, outside communication need. Good question. Okay. okay. Just on a side note, by the way, I do cite uh, Ashland CERT often when I talk about radio etiquette with some of the folks and our rookies that I think you folks do an excellent job and are really the benchmark for proper radio etiquette. Copy. Excellent. Uh, anything else? To add that, great. Uh, Chief, that was, that sounds really interesting and 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 fun, and uh, I definitely want to get in on that this year, and I hope uh, a lot of you do too. And and uh, please do email uh, Chief Carnes or myself, uh, and I'll pass it on too, so uh, you can get in touch with me as well. Great, uh, you're welcome to to stick around if you like. Uh, I see Doug has started the applause icons, uh, so thank you. I well, thank this. you so much. It was good to be here with you again and hopefully you can uh, come in and I forgot to mention uh, we will feed you lunch so if that's the hook that was needed there it is <laughs> all right and there's food um, great so th again thank you very much uh, all right uh, thanks Paul take care all right bye bye uh, bye and uh, we'll move on to some uh, some other stuff well we're moving on to the, the training videos uh, obviously you all got the got the email uh, or the uh, Nixel email so um, let me open up to some general discussion here. Um, first, before we get into the videos, is there any uh, f for CERT improvement and training and, and uh, excellence and preparation? Um, one of the things we're doing is the Leadership Council is working on that uh, strategic plan, which I'm really going to double down on here very shortly because we have a meeting coming up. Uh, and there are other things that need to happen to get CERT in a good place to be uh, ready to respond, as well as having our staff person, which Chris has mentioned we will be having soon, as soon as that process, as the process continues, we get candidates and, and uh, find, find the right person. Uh, anybody have any other thoughts about certain uh, things, concerns in their minds or things they want to see us do better or how, how is this whole meeting thing going here with the video? Are you, are you getting tired of it or is it helpful? Do you, should we try to do an in-person thing maybe outside next month? A any thoughts? I enjoy it like this, but I mean, I'm okay with any what you decide. Okay. Uh, it, of course, it's now to me. Uh, Crystal. So I, I brought up the uh, communications things to Chief Carnes, and I think that would be a great thing to practice as an outside exercise um, when we finally get together as a, as a, a in-person meeting so that we could, um, you know, be out and about and um, our past exercises have been that we, you know, send people out in different directions and then see what kind of communications we can, we can do and, and practice that. So um, that's one of my votes. I'd like to see that happen. Cool. Cool. Anybody else? Uh, I, I'll, Missy's not here. She had a suggestion about um, that I thought was a good one. Oh yeah. Uh, building marking like, 
what is the right way to mark a building if we have to go around and do that? And uh, uh, so that might be another one. Uh, maybe we can even make that an in-person thing of some sort. So that was another suggestion that came up. Um, hey, Paul, just a, a quick one. Yes, Tom. Um, so I made it tonight, but it's, it's generally difficult. I was just curious if the six o'clock time is set, kind of set in stone or that just works the best for everybody. Uh, it's just, it can't just cuts into a number of things. Here, um, here. Okay, well, uh, six is is basically traditional, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, I, well, here you are the people that are showing up. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe we can do a quick poll and not won't be binding or anything. But um, uh, I think the second Wednesday is a very helpful night. I mean, it's a, it's one that we've latched into yeah. that have fewer conflicts in general for events. Uh, do people want how 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 people? Let's see. Uh, okay, so I put some meat on on the proposal. Yes, um, Doug. Let thanks. Uh, I'm looking for the gentleman's name who just proposed that, so I can use him. John who was, John, thank you. Sorry, John. My apologies. No worries. Uh, John, a time slot that's worked well for me with other activities at other times in my life has been seven thirty to nine. Would that be, uh, would that work for you? Shall we put that forward as a thing to vote on? Or would you propose a different time? You know, I'm trying the to other... put concrete things so that we can collectively come up with, uh, you know, input that means something. Sorry. Just FYI, my other commitments are usually seven o'clock uh, to 8.30. I can make 6.30, you know, I just didn't know how close to six things had to be, but, um, Typically, my other stuff is seven o'clock, seven to eight thirty, or something like that. Yeah. Just FYI. We used to meet at okay. six so Paul, we, thirty. Sorry. We used to meet at six thirty until Terry changed that um, for some reason. So that was <laughs> consistent for years. Six thirty. All right. So six thirty would be easier. Even that half hour would all be. All right. Uh, let me. May I make a, a proposal to, to vote here? Um, why don't we have all four times from 6 to 7.30? We'll have four choices, 6, 6, 30, 7, 7, 30, and vote for every time that works for you. So you can vote as many times as you like, and uh, or all four times, and we'll try to do a quick head count. Uh, how many, uh, it says 6 o'clock work for you? Okay, it's just enthusiastic. Let's do it that way. So uh, one, two, the screens are moving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We'll allow two votes on one camera. That's all right. All right. So we got eleven. Could do six o'clock. Uh, how right. is six thirty for? Right. Okay. How is six thirty? Fifteen. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, it sounds I'm like we're going to go notes. later for sure. Sorry, Doug. What? I say I'm taking notes. I got it. Okay. Uh, seven o'clock. I'm good for all, so I'm just going to vote every time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And how many prefer? How many or, is that? I got nine. You want to hold your hands up again? Just to make sure we didn't screw it up. Seven, seven o'clock votes. <coughs> yeah, I got nine. And then seven thirty votes. One, two. All right, we got four. Um, sounds oh. like we should at least go to six thirty. Um. Uh, and uh, seven was almost as good. Um, I, I don't know that we have a procedure for for setting for setting our r rules here while we're in the interim period. But uh, all in favor of six thirty? I don't. <laughs> or, yeah, it's any, not a rule. Any, we can do what we want. Any discussion? Any any further discussion on this? So would they be ninety minutes? Would, I think. Oh, so how do people feel about the ninety minutes? Is that I like it. I think things expand to the amount of time available, and often we just spend a lot of time doing nothing. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah. And particularly, and certainly in the video mode, uh, and even maybe in an in-person meeting, it'd be nice to get, get, yeah, unless get there it is in and a, out. Unless there's a reason to have it be two hours. So 6.30 to 8. And then we're out of here. And I wouldn't have to have a quite an early, although I'm getting used to earlier dinners, to be honest. Um, getting old. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. And, uh, but the restaurants are much faster. Um, <laughs> and you, anyhow, okay. Uh, all in favor of 6.30 next month? Hi. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Let's do it. I, by okay. acclamation, we'll uh, switch to 630. I think it's a great suggestion. Thanks, John, for bringing that up. Well, thank you for being accommodating because I cook tonight and I just kind of rush things to get on. This is I can finally make a meeting. You know? That's right. And uh, and I'll probably even spend more time preparing, too, because I usually work late as I can. OK. Um, well, that was very, that was an incredibly effective uh, use of unplanned time. Is there any other proposals for uh, things that we could do? How, do you, so um, how many, how many people feel like getting, doing a, like a, like an outdoor at the fire station radio thing next time? Like we could walk around the neighborhoods and stuff. If weather permitting, let's see, that's April. That could probably be good, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, why don't we, uh, uh, we've got the planning channel in the Mattermost, which I think most people are on already, hopefully. And if not, let me know and I'll get you in there. Uh, we could talk, bounce around a couple ideas for that. And, uh, or if anybody's watching this and, and is desperate to uh, let us know what their opinion is, either join us on Mattermost or email me, paul at gracion.com. Uh, which I'd love to tell you about how I changed my email provider from Google to something else, uh, but that's off topic. Ariane? I, I, I think to be outside in the, it's still cold in April. I mean, to do that, um, uh, what you were suggesting, I, I think it's great, but I, May would probably be better because it's still chilly. Yeah. All and right. Dark. Well, let's. Uh, dark, some of us have to walk home and uh, I don't, plan to meet a bear anytime soon or a cougar, but you never know. It's pretty dark around where I live at yeah. night. Well, uh, maybe we can maybe we can assist with that too. So, uh, okay, that's a good point. Let's, we, it's an uh, idea. We can certainly meet inside. We can uh, clear some engine bay space uh, for the initial gathering, but as far as getting out in the neighborhoods, yeah, I'm just looking, you know, it'll be lighter in a month, but it's 6.30 now and it's dark, almost dark. So yeah. um, the exercise itself would be uh, under the cover of darkness. All right. Well, we'll consider options there. Uh, maybe we do a, I won't, I won't say, but we'll figure out something. Uh, good. Any other, any other topics we should be talking about, Dana? Uh, are we changing leadership council to 6.30 as well? Uh, actually, I want to change the leadership council tonight to back to Wednesday, but um, I haven't had a chance to talk to anybody about that yet. Uh, Maybe that's a matter most conversation. Yeah, let's we'll pursue that. Um, uh, it seems like most people like six thirty, so it's, that would make sense to me. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, let's. I'll make a note of that too. Um, uh, just, I'll edit this out. Uh, Doug and Tabitha are is Tuesday or it's Wednesday still workable for you guys? If we do like next Wednesday. At the moment, yes. At the moment, yes. okay, right. Maybe not forever. I thought like, we could take it one step at a time. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, and Doug, I will be getting responding to your mattermost message, which I saw and didn't respond to, but I will. Okay. Uh, let's. Janine, yes. Um, as a newbie who came through training during COVID um, online, <laughs> Zooming, I just don't want us to lose track of getting to some hands-on in-person stuff somewhere down the line. So that something to re remember. Thank you. That's absolutely. And I, I'm sure all of us feel the same way that we'd like to get you fully <laughs> on there and you know and and we want to resume doing uh our what we feel i think justifiably proud of as our excellent full basic trainings doug 
Thanks. Uh, do you want to decide right here and now, Paul, to move the next leadership council meeting to Wednesday at 6.30, or would you like to defer? Uh, let's uh, let's make sure everybody gets a chance to discuss that. So I, th I think uh, we don't have a, I'm not sure we have a quorum here. We probably do I have a quorum. There is no quorum. What am I talking Valid about? Valid point. Uh, but uh, uh, not let's let's hold off on that until we've got the uh, get the group see if anybody has it has trouble with it. Roger. But nobody I guess nobody here has trouble with Wednesday. Is that is that accurate? Like Barb and Barb? Okay, great. Um, okay, so admittedly this isn't like the coolest presentation, but I hope having Chief Carnes in made up for it. Uh, we have some videos that uh, are quite short, uh, most of them, and have an all very certain relevance. So I liked I liked a few of them. Did anybody else get a chance to to preview a few videos other than Steve or Steve? <laughs> Ariane looked a little bit. Doug looked a little bit. Okay. Um, all right. I have. Wait, where is it here? Uh, so I'd like to suggest that we view a. Pick a pick a few couple of videos. We'll just take some suggestions, and then watch them, and then talk about what they did wrong, uh, or what they did right. Uh, how's that sound? Okay. Um, anybody want to throw out a, their favorite uh, a favorite video link from that? In fact, we're going to need you to link it in the uh, chat so I can go to the right one. Um, I thought there was a there's a short one on lifts and carries that personally I don't feel like I'm I'm fully reviewed on that very recently so I thought that's a, a nice one just like how do you safely put someone in a chair and move them around and that sort of thing you guys want to take a look at that one and uh, and give it a quick discussion okay that's all right all right um, <clears throat> I will bring this up. Stand by. Again, I can edit this part out later, maybe. Uh, okay. Here we go. Okay, now that we've discussed the different lifts and carries. We're gonna go ahead and demonstrate a few, starting first with the chair lift. What I do before I use a chair to lift any patient is check the chair to make sure that it's stable. I'll lean it forward on its front legs, lean on it, make sure there's not a lot of flex. I'll tip it back onto the back legs, same thing, check for flex in the chair. And then finally, I'll sit down in the chair and rock back just to make sure it feels stable. If I could have two volunteers, Why don't you have a seat in the chair? Okay, once you have your victim into the chair, you want to give them something to do, something to distract them, keep their mind off what's going to happen. Can I borrow this bottle of water? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. I want you to hold on to that and don't let that go, okay? Now you want to explain everything that's going to happen. Exactly. So what I'm going to do on the count of three, I'm going to tip the chair back, then we'll pick you up and we'll move you. So you come around to the back of the chair, put one foot against the leg of the chair to stabilize it, Grab the sides of the chair in a comfortable position. It's important that you have the person with the better upper body strength do this part because this is going to be the heavier portion of the lift. So we'll grab the chair. On three, I'm going to tip you back. Do not reach out. One, two, three. Tip the chair back. If you'd like to come around the front, squat down and grab the legs of the chair. A little bit lower. Good. We'll pick up on three. One, two, three. And we'll move the victim. We'll set the patient down on three. One, two, three. And then down again, one, two, three. The chairlift is great for somebody who may not be able to uh, move around so well on their own or the elderly victim, because now it gives them some place to sit. You're not taking them out of the, the situation they were in, having them sit on debris. They have a chair to sit on. Nice job. Thank you for your help. If you guys go back to your seats. Are there any questions? Yes. 
I would think that if I were that person in that situation that I'd be a little bit nervous or maybe flailing around. So if that were to happen, what would you do? Generally what happens with victims, when they start receiving help, they'll calm down and relax because they're being removed from the situation. And uh, if not, you can always just duct tape them to the chair and be on your way. <laughs>
the the blanket and then pull the blanket out because it could stretch it out. So I thought that was that was interesting. They went a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, what other what other, what else did you notice on that? Anybody? Uh, I I noticed that uh, on the last lift, the two the two person lift, that uh, when he let him down, he was careful with the head, but when he lifted him up, it seemed like the head fell down and. So I guess there's a way to support the head as well, well as getting your hands under the shoulders. But uh, he didn't. Did you see the head flop down? Yeah, that I was. Did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my observation as well. But there, there should be a way by holding, you know, your elbows together to support the head as well. Yeah. But that was a great demonstration. I thought really clear. Good. I was glad to see it. Oh, Steve, did you have a comment? Um, yeah, I was thinking with that last one, it would have been, you know, they, I guess there was a big assumption that there was no neck or back injury there. Um, right. And it might have been nice for him to have just kind of confirm that or kind of mention that, oh, yeah, we've already checked the person, they don't have a neck or back injury. Otherwise, it seems like that would mess the person up big time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Barbarossa? I have a real life experience with a slightly different use of the chair that a uh, couple of years in the before time, a couple of years before the pandemic, on the 4th of July, it was at an outdoor little get together. And my friend was sitting right next to me, who I've known for like a long, long time, and this, she's healthy and everything. Um, and we were just having like, things on the grill and a little bit of wine and, you know, seltzer water and stuff and she just suddenly kind of said i'm not feeling too well and i said well why don't you put your head between your knees so she did that and then she sat up a little bit and she said oh i really don't and then she just passed out <laughs> and um so there we are sitting in a backyard in talent you know so and i mean i was shouting in her ear I, we were poking her and you know like trying to see if she was just like, well, like what was going on and she was not responding at all. So they called 911 and the, and the EMTs came. And so she was sitting in one of those uh, molded white plastic lawn chairs, right? And what they did was they wanted to get her onto a blanket on the ground so they could ch check her out, right? And, and administer something if they needed to. So, cause they tried shouting at her too. And she was like somewhat semi-responsive but not right at all and so they wanted to lie, lay her down so rather than try and get her out of the chair and lying on the ground they just carefully supporting the chair and everything t laid the blanket out and tipped the chair backwards carefully so that she, she was on the ground with her knees up right and then they just slid the chair out un from under her so that would be another way of getting somebody out of a chair onto the ground if that's what you wanted to do i mean i was surprised that they did it but it worked and she was fine. They took her to the, I went to the ER with her, but it was just something stupid, but uh, vaso, vasal vascular something or other. So there was nothing wrong with her, but she was definitely unconscious briefly and definitely needed EMTs to confirm that nothing else was wrong. So, um, but I, that was just another use of the chair. Okay, interesting and interesting story. Um, uh, Barb Knox. Um, I've been uh, really thinking about my CERT training as I watch the pictures coming out of the Ukraine, uh, the people trying to escape and the things they're having to do and the lack of power and water and um, now food, you know, reminds me of what disaster is, you know, and um, I'm thinking of those people crossing that bridge that got destroyed trying to get to the other side and all the different ways that people are being carried across that bridge <laughs> yeah 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 that's a, a, a not a natural disaster but it's a disaster for sure yeah and uh and that's a yeah uh thanks barb any other uh comments uh crystal yeah, I, I was thinking back to the chair lift and there, or no, the uh, non-chair lift where they tucked 
under the arms and the knees. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you could, um, if the person's conscious, you could have them roll their head to your side arm. And then eventually as you get them up higher, they could actually uh, lean their head back to your chest and you could support it as you're walking. So I, I think that would be good. Then you'd be, you know, real close and kind of a bear hug kind of thing, and they would feel uh, secure. So that was just a, a thought that I watched that head lagging. And I thought, oh, they need to, you know, pull them closer and, and really uh, support them. So that was my thought. All right. Um, I'm a little worried about people bending with their back. I, I saw a couple of those, not, you know, you got to bend with the knees and keep the back straight, right? So uh, hopefully people are thinking about that. Uh, Ariane? Sometimes it's not, I, I know you're supposed to bend with your with your back and not your knees, but it, I mean, your knees and not your back, but if, you, if your knees are stiff, like <laughs> terribly stiff, you can't. I, I've had stiff knees for like, since I was a teenager, really. So it's it's pretty bad. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I, I know. I, I, how many people here have had knee trouble? <laughs> Probably <laughs> all of us. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, we can't all be on the radio, but we'll, we'll do the best we can in the event. Um, okay. Uh, any other thoughts about that one? Anybody have a uh, video they want us to, uh, Dana? Um, I think those would be good skills to practice in person. The, yeah. the lifts that's uh, I remember in basic training yeah. that we went through those pretty quickly. And that's one of those skills that I think is important. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, 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 feel, I feel now like that we could do yeah. more or spend more time on that. Yeah, for sure. Maybe with that's a follow up mm -hmm. exercise we do real, real. I mean, it doesn't doesn't have to be fancy. We can just try it and practice it. Steve. Yeah, I thought he uh, well, the instructor did a really good job of kind of prompting people to tell them what to do like okay on the count of three you know we're going to do this one two three and we're okay now we're going to put them down so i think that was really good to you know good communication mm -hmm. um on the flip side i thought um again maybe he was just trying to really shorten things down but like with the second victim the one they were rolling under the blanket i don't know if the victim was supposed to be unconscious but they never talked to the victim just tell them what they were going to do right. and they just kept talking about the victim in front of this person so I'm just thinking that seemed a little bit, uh, you know, insensitive. <laughs> right. Well, at least they didn't walk over the victim, which is the yeah. other thing that people <laughs> keep doing. <laughs> the other thing I thought was interesting is that he tested the chair to make sure it was solid. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, right. You would just grab something if you were in an emergency and automatically, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that either. Okay. Um, Paul? I really? Yeah, just uh, John. Um, with Boy Scouts, we did a lot of uh, lifting with, um, you know, two poles and a, and a tarp kind of a thing. I just didn't know if the base camps are set up with that kind of stuff, you know, poles and blankets. Well, we have some back, every base has, I'm thinking three backboards, barbed, I don't know, but maybe two or three. Um, so we have that as our first line of defense and there's lots of blankets i believe in in all the bases uh not so much poles so that could be an interesting useful add-on uh did i see donna yes i just wanted to say i really did like the way he did the counting the one two three there was no way anybody could make a mistake or all of a sudden say i'm i wasn't ready you know and you're lifting a person on a blanket I mean, he made it really, really clear. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Daniel. Uh, first of all, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I keep, we're talking about bending the back and how that's bad form. And I keep wondering how many of us know how much we can lift with good form. Mm -hmm. If, you know, let's take a more worst case, a 200 pound person. If four people were trying to lift them, that would mean, you know, roughly each individual involved would have to lift 50 pounds. 
And 50 pounds is a lot of weight oh, yeah. for the, the average one of us. So, and, and of course, the worst case scenario is you'll lift and you, you know, you can't hold on and, and you drop them or something. But um, I'm just curious, you know, if, if that's something we could test or in a sometime when we're all together, bring a few uh, weight plates from a local gym or something and find out just how much we can lift because it, it would be good to know your limit. And I don't know mine, for instance. So, all right, all share right. that idea. I, uh, I think that could be input to a good, uh, a good little exercise. Um, I know there's a, uh, we occasion, we usually borrow the full size dummy uh, that I think is normal human weight. Well, normal. No, forget I said normal. But anyway, a human weighted um, uh, uh, object that is we can we can drop uh although pro better not to so um and then uh maybe we'd get something like that and even like add on like yeah. stack something on it and you could really do a test uh and of course uh always remember to put the uh the strong people at the at the top and and torso and then uh and then the legs are a little easier i always, mm -hmm. I always go for the legs myself um okay yeah that's uh that's good crystal um, talking about lifting, um, in my um, initial training, and we did the lift in the practice, the building was smoky, you know, we were all um, in kind of a, a realistic scenario. I was the one who failed on the lift, and it was my back. And communications was really important there because I realized it after we had already started the lift. And, and just, um, you know, speaking out, I think is a, is a good thing that we each need to know, say, oh, wait a minute, stop, you know, hold it, hold it, let's go back down, you know, um, and knowing that we can do that if we do find we can't lift. And the other thing is, it, it would be a good idea if we all filled our backpacks full of, you know, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, and, and just, you know, did a, did a, a lift at home and, uh, you know how much how much can we hold this uh, 30 pounds is absolutely my max <laughs> 20 is better yeah uh, so. okay that's it yeah that's good yeah very good points um, you know, uh, Richard? Uh, can you hear me yes it's occurred to me that then you know as long as who is falling out one two three could also and buying speak up if you can't do it you know or if it becomes too heavy speak up you know encourage people to uh, um not sure i totally did anybody get that i i think you were breaking up on that one oh sorry i'll just try again the person who's leading it and who's who's saying one two three they could preface it by saying speak up if it becomes too much you know to make sure that people good idea yeah that's good part. good idea doug uh, having done some, oh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Great. Um, Tabitha and I have done a fair number of uh, practice cave rescues and so forth, and so we know a little bit about litter carrying. Um, in the chaos of the moment, going around obstacles in an emergency situation where there's smoke, you know, anytime we'd actually be put in pressed into service, there's a lot of reasons why people want to chatter. Oh, did you see over here? Hey, we're going to look over there. But in a litter carry, all the people carrying have to be able to hear the boss man or whatever term you want to use for that. And for that, you really have to keep chatter to minimum, meaning just about zero, so that when Crystal says, oh, stop, the person in front knows what's going on. Stop, I have to put it down. And then that person can say and doesn't have to scream, hey, 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 everybody. So when you get that chatter down to just about zero and then you have clear comms, it works great. Very good. All right. A silent thumbs up on that. Uh, thank you. Anything Anything else on that one, on listen carries? I have a couple other suggestions, but uh, anybody have any requests for out of the... Uh, Barb has a question. 
Yeah, some um, I think it was John that suggested poles in the on the base mm -hmm. supply list. What kind of poles? What kind of poles? Yeah. Um, John, you're muted, but um, uh, good. Well, no, nothing too fancy. I'm just trying to think. Uh, Would wooden dolls, poles? even like one inch dolls, the kind of stuff, just something that, you know, if you have two long ones, six foot or so, uh, you wrap the trifold the blanket over it, it's enough to carry some pretty heavy loads. One inch? Okay. What keep what keeps the blankets from slipping out? If you if you try fold them as it goes underneath and then fold it over uh, on each side, it, it actually with a body on top um, works pretty well. Okay. Uh, Crystal, I have experience with trying to um, take something or take someone um, out of a uh, an area that uh, there was no rescue coming into and it was just a few hikers we grabbed people as they came along and said what do you help us and um, we used branches um, that were from down trees yep. and um, what didn't work was that we used we didn't really have anything to go between the poles so we used a, a t-shirt and we put the poles through the t-shirt and up the arms. And that lasted a while, but the weight of the person began to rip through the t-shirt. So yes. that didn't work very well. The other thing that didn't work very well was that the person we were carrying was probably 180 pounds maybe. And the poles, there's only a person on the front and the back. There wasn't enough people and it was the trail wasn't wide enough to have you know four people lift so there was two people carrying this mm -hmm. and it was way too heavy and um at least in our scenario what happened was one of the hikers had a uh, a tow strap in his car to tow another car and he ran a mile out and <laughs> got that tow strap brought it back and we were able to um wrap it around the poles and up and over the shoulder of the front and back people who were lifting and then they could lift with their shoulders mm -hmm. and they just balanced with their their hands but um, it was really a workout and it took a while and of course the person was injured and in a lot of pain and and that wasn't much fun but th that's just a couple of things that didn't work real well. But the the t-shirt doesn't work. Um, I've never done a trifold blanket and um, I'd, I'd be willing to learn that because uh, even if we didn't have a stretcher, um, maybe a blanket on a pole would be helpful. I, you know, it would depend on the situation, I think. Or a tarp, when you're camping off and you have a tarp. Mm -hmm. What was the injury? It was a, an ankle injury. Uh, this person slipped on kind of a, a gravelly steep area and they twisted their ankle under them and then they fell down and sat on that ankle and it broke both the tibula and the fibula at the ankle there. Wow. And they, they could not put any weight on it. So even hopping on one foot or anything like that. Yeah. They, they, there was too much pain. They, they couldn't, couldn't do that. So, and of course, the cell phones didn't reach. <laughs> of course. So uh, I can uh, add the I can add the polls to the list of items that we want to have in the um, basis. Okay. Um, blackboards are more capable, but mm -hmm. it seems like polls you can put a lot in a small space, and they should be cheaper. So maybe easier. Yeah, there aren't a lot of backboards but no, if, you no, want, not a lot, yeah. if you want polls i can put them on the list and then sure. down the road when we have a budget maybe That's, we can yeah. do something that sounds like a nice suggestion and you know mm -hmm. be prepared as we used to say <laughs> uh tabitha i think you had a or, or sorry um tabitha did you have a comment 
I did. I don't know if this was uh, discussed when I was stuffing salad into my face, but they, when we did the cave rescue training, uh, they made a point of saying that not to call the person a victim. Um, they're always a patient. And I, I heard a lot of victim talk in the videos. Hmm. It, I mean, I think they said it would just alarm people and it's, it's kind of, you know, making it a, a worse situation just semantically. But I don't yeah. know what other spots are of that. That makes sense. Yeah. I've mentioned that as well in the past uh, to CERT. And I think it, there may be a different, different terms for the different communities. So what, the, what term is, is used in CERT? Seems to me like the best thing to do is to call them by their name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it is a term of art that we need. Uh, let's see. The Hold on. My search is going very slow. I'm doing a, uh, okay. Yeah, I like injured. Victim does have the kind of the doomsday thing, you know, the, the dying person, the, the victim. Whereas injured, well, you can can be injured by, yeah, injured. I, that's or that right. what Sturt says. Well, um, in the basic also... participant manual, victim appears six or seven times and patient appears 26 times i think because, probably because there's a lot of medical context in there but uh, patient does seem like a more neutral term yeah it's generic it's not inflammatory we can't call them the mcguffin i suppose <laughs> okay um yeah that's great comments thank you uh anything else on that I just threw uh, something in the chat about uh, would search for making the the stretcher using blanket and poles. So, right, and metal poles is another option, right? Which aren't necessarily more expensive. I mean, it depends on how we source things. Maybe we yeah. maybe there's metal poles mm -hmm. that are available, or I suppose um, let's see, PVC pipes. Uh, that too. No. no, no, no. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Good to know that now rather than in the event. Uh, what else? Wood is nice because it's not slippery and it's not heavy. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's, yeah, I was thinking of lightness. So that's yeah, good. Okay. And it's not cold. All right. Okay. Anybody have a, anybody have a video proposal? Picked. I, I don't, yeah. Um, the, what do I want to say? Another thing, we have an option here. We could just uh, adjourn and say we've done what we wanted to do uh, and give you back 20 minutes of your life. Um, <laughs> uh, we have that, or let me just tell you what I, the other ones I th thought were interesting. Um, notes. Oh, dear. Uh, or he could threaten us with. I could threaten you with bleeding. There's bleeding videos. Come on. How much we want, want our we want our twenty minutes. We want our twenty minutes. <laughs> All right. Well, um I Good night. I will I will <laughs> well all right. It's on us. It is on us to come up with some gripping material for next month that it captivates us for 90 full minutes. So that's our challenge for next month. Uh, and uh, uh, any other further comments? Ariane, did you have a comment? Well, uh, I just had, oh, sorry, where is it? Oh, am I, uh, no, you can hear me, sorry. Yeah, interesting with Zoom, if you put your hand up, it says your hand is up. There's a little message, but anyway, just to to um, to go back to, to the event on May 18th. So CERT will not be participating in, are you, how we would normally were participating being the victims, the, yeah, the injured, uh, the, there's, the uh, dying or whatever. Right, it yeah. wouldn't be a CERT activation or CERT exercise per se, mm -hmm. since really it's a, it's a fire, um, sorry, uh, airport exercise. Mm -hmm. So we're just, we are responding as individuals, I would say, um, as I understand it. And, uh, you know, we can do some CERT overhead. I think that'd be cool, actually. Like we can, you know, have our own sign in and, and know who's there and, and communicate amongst ourselves and maybe carpool 
So uh, yeah, there are some add-ons we could do, but yeah, it's not a cert. We're not organized okay. in cert teams per se. Mm -hmm. uh, a carpool would be uh, welcome, yeah. or else yeah. I can't go. <laughs> All right, but, well, yeah. we'll make we'll make it happen. Uh, Steve and May then Doug. 18th, uh, May eighteenth is the forty-second anniversary of Mount St. Helens blowing up. So, <laughs> oh, I'll be practicing these things. Yeah. Oh. Great. Okay. Thanks, Richard. Steve. Yeah, I mentioned earlier. I was. Uh, I guess I got to play a distraught family member, and you know, got to kind of ham it up. But um, I remember, you know, we got to hang out with some of the people who were victims. I remember Ed Botticino, I guess. Is that, is that his? Anyway, he Batistella, was Ed Batistella. Yeah, whatever, Ed. Um, anyway, he was he was great because he, he was moonlaged up, but he was playing the role. He was basically handcuffed because he was a prisoner on the plane. <laughs> that when the plane crashed, I think maybe the uh, you know the federal marshal died or something, and so they law enforcement got called in because they had to capture him to make sure he didn't escape. Oh, and, so I mean, you know, they could really uh, make some pretty elaborate scenarios. <laughs> wow, I want to be the computer hacker that did something. I don't have to think about it. Okay, um, who who did I? I think it was Doug. Doug, go ahead. Uh, for organizational or any other logistical reasons, Paul, are you asking that we con that interested parties contact you or uh, just go directly to the fire? Chief or um, both? You know, I think it would be best if you email uh, Chief Carnes and copy me. Mm -hmm. That would be Good idea. the best. Clear direction. Sounds great. Okay. I think we've done it. And I, I really appreciate each and every one of you being here um, and, uh, and, and keeping cert going uh and you know and i feel like we have a core group that could respond if we needed to we needed to get spring into action so thank you for being that person uh appreciate you putting this together paul that's a right. lot of work cheers right. thank you paul all right thank you, very much so. thank you have a have a safe evening and um remember to keep breathing thank you, <laughs> thank you paul good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. thank you thanks so much good night.